Today it is time for a best of three series of top level StarCraft 2 and what I've got for you is a Terran versus Protoss where in map number one we find ourselves on Death Aura. Spawning here in the bottom right hand corner playing with the blue Terran SCVs from South Korea we have one of the highest ranked Terran players in the world and he goes by the name of TY. Now, T.Y. just a couple of weeks ago, actually, maybe a couple months ago at this point, but regardless, he won the most recent GSL Code S, which is a ridiculous feat, and he actually ended up doing so in a 4-0 fashion in the Grand Finals over Cure, which is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, when you end up winning a Grand Finals 4-0, you know that you were significantly better than your opponent. And actually, okay, he's starting off with what we used to call a bit of a Maca Rex. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit with the barracks going up right over at the third base here of the Terran player instead. Let's first off though introduce his opponent playing here in the opposite corner of Death Aura with the Red Protoss probes from South Korea. We have one of the highest ranked Protoss players in the business but he's also one of the biggest memesters on Twitch. In case you've never checked out his channel I highly recommend you go ahead and do so. I believe it's twitch.tv slash parting the big boy? I think it's something along those lines, but he's one of the uh, one of the funnest streams to watch. We have, of course, none other than Parting. I mean, I guess I already spoiled it right there with his Twitch.tv title, right? But anyways, um, so this is yeah what we used to refer to as a Maca Rex. This is kind of an annoying strategy that Parting has to go up against right now because for all he knows, right? He sees the gases, he sees that an orbital is starting up as well. He knows that there's a barracks out there somewhere, but for all he knows, it could be over at his third base and it could be multiples. So because of that, he started up a 20 Cybercore, a 20 Nexus, then also a Zealot as a follow-up and I guess now a Pylon and that's when he's finally going to be able to go back into pro production. That pro production right there was cut down for quite some time and now he's, he's going to be settled right here with a pretty much useless uh, zealot which is yeah kind of annoying now this reaper yeah it will be sent on over to the probe so he's going to be able to uh, now figure out exactly what he's going up against but look the zealot is already out in the meantime ty okay he's going full proxy apparently he started up a factory as well over at the high yield gas base this is pretty far away from the terran or from the protos player rather but i guess this is still going to be hmm a little bit cheeky. Yeah, look at that. There's going to be a Widow Mine starting up and then also a Starport. So I guess he wants to reduce the travel time right now on that very first, uh, you know, Medivac drop. So I think uh, I think he's probably going to go for like a Medivac and then load a couple of Widow Mines into it and, you know, send them to watch his opponent's mineral line. It can be very, very helpful. Now that Zealot, by the way, who I called useless earlier, has gone across the map completely unscouted. And this is actually quite nice right now. There's still no command center on the low ground. There's actually an armory coming up. Uh, is TY gonna go for the ultimate one base all-in? I think that's what he's doing right now. Um, could this... No. Could this be... Is he gonna... No, he needs a tech lab. I thought for a second this could be a Thor drop. This looks like a really, really old-school build. This used to be a thing people would do all the time. It's like we're, we're going straight back to, like, 2011 or something like that. Um, well, the armory is gonna finish up here in just a little bit. Nah, we'll see. We'll see what he decides to do with the armory. I mean, he doesn't have any Hellions or whatever. Uh, so you can't morph them into Hellbats, and that's not particularly useful anyway against someone who's opening up Stalker, which is obviously the thing that Parting does pretty much all the time. Now, there are quite a few Marines out at this point. Ugh, they take three shots right here from those Stalkers. Oh my god. Yo! There is actually... He is actually... Okay, is this a Thor drop? No way. Anyways, in the meantime, that Medivac... Is gonna be a little bit annoying right now inside of the main base here of the Protoss player. Protoss in the meantime though did break through that wall. He's gonna be able to pull at least a couple of these boys away, but that still is 10 probe kills uh, going down in just a matter of seconds. Looks like the Stalker right there will get picked off as well, but not without getting ultimate value there. Good target firing here so far though with these Stalkers. Picking up a lot of Marines, picking up a couple of these SCVs as well, but there it is guys. This is... One of the oldest strategies in the book, uh, it is a Thor drop. So wait, it's a Maca Rex into a Proxy Widow Mine into a Thor drop. This is really, really uncommon. Now the SCV is still out there as well to repair this uh, this dropship back up to full hit points. Oh my god, I haven't seen this in a very long time. Hmm. All right. Well, here comes the Thor. It's gonna be spotted right away. Thor is here. <laughs> <laughs> That's so strange. 
I guess this kind of strategy is better than it used to be back in the early days, once again, because, well, you have that medevac boost ability, right? So you can uh, fly it across the map a little bit faster. There's no blink done in this particular case, by the way, so normally Parting is a big fan of going for that blink ability, but uh, he's not, yeah, he hasn't really had the time to, uh, to tech up yet. He decided to go for the robo facility instead. Let's see how he can actually play this one out, because this is, this is interesting. Already, shield battery, though, just gonna repair that, uh, that pylon back up. And you gotta keep in mind, if that medevac falls, uh, yeah, that Thor is dead. This is still not a necessarily a terror. That's still... Mm. Three stalkers right there for one Thor. Is that a decent trade? It's not terrible. It's not terrible. Siege tank right now also produced out of that factory from earlier, but I'm liking this position for parting more and more right now. I think it's a pretty cool attempt here. That Prism is out right now as well, but yeah, the uh, the Micro here from Parting, obviously, very, very good. He's probably the strongest Micro Pros in the world, <laughs> just like that. TY is gonna be pushed out of game number one. He didn't have an expansion there, Parting obviously didn't really take a whole lot of damage, and there was no way that TY could play that one out. Yeah, so I think that that game number one is a perfect example of a game where I like everything that the Terran player is doing. But sadly, it no longer works. Over time, since players have gotten so much better, um, one base all-ins have just kind of disappeared. I mean, you see them obviously maybe in Zerk versus Zerk, right? Where people go like, you know, 13 gas, 12 pool and all that. And you see them in the mirror matchups every once in a while. But in general, in Protoss versus Terran and Zerk versus Terran and Zerk versus Protoss, one base all-ins are very uncommon because players have gotten too good. And what I mean with that is that back in the early days of StarCraft II, Nobody really knew, like, nobody really knew what you were supposed to be doing and how you were supposed to be microing units. Every once in a while, I like to go back to strategies and, and build orders and, and VODs of tournaments from 2010. So, for example, if you watch the very first GSO Code S, which was won by Fruit Dealer back in 2010, if you watch those VODs, you will realize how terrible everyone was. <laughs> and I don't mean any disrespect, right? But I genuinely think that... A Diamond League player in 2020 would probably be able to win the very first GSL Code S. It's not because the players were bad or whatever, but because the game was just not figured out very well. Like, most of the games kind of came down to both players make one big army and then they clash once and that's the entire game. Um, it, it was just, yeah, not that impressive. I mean, obviously a lot of the strategies got nerfed over time as well. Back then, most Protoss builds were just based around one base all-ins. So basically what you would do is you would go for like four gateways on one base and then you would make stalkers and then send them across the map. Obviously Blizzard had to step in in a couple of those instances as well. Because I think with the four gate, they ended up nerfing the warp gate research. So the warp gate research was increased and therefore those, those one base all-ins weren't as powerful anymore. But yeah, over time, strategies have developed a lot and, you know, players have gotten way better at controlling their units, especially parting. I mean, parting is... Maybe even the strongest micro player in the world. At some point, he certainly was. It's a little hard to say right now because all the top level players are very good at micro. Um, but yeah, he's not really going to make a lot of mistakes when it comes to controlling his stalkers. He's made, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of those. So yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's just the simple reason why those one base all ins don't really work anymore. Just because players have gotten too good. Which in a way is a little bit sad, but... Um, Hey, it's also a good thing, right? It means that we get more epic games of StarCraft where nobody really wins until like the 20 minute mark. And those in general are my favorite games to watch. Regardless, different build order this time around from TY. You can see right there that second refinery timing. It's quite a bit later than in the previous one. In the previous one, he started it off pretty much right away. This time around, it is going to be a command center right here on the low ground first. Now, can he slow this down? Parting, that is. If he gets the kill right there on that SCV, that'd be nice. There you go. Just a couple seconds before finishing. At the same time, he did start up a pylon over here as well, over at the, uh, well, once again, the high yield gas. Twilight Council coming up at home. I think that this might just be a warp in location for a little while later. Command Center, though, does of course finish up here eventually. Very important for TY that he does finish that. Nice little bit of micro there, and this is what I mean. Well, <laughs> every time you make a claim as a caster about someone being good at X, they immediately mess up X. I think if I wouldn't have said that, he probably wouldn't have lost that adept. But anyways, uh, normally, and this is good scout as well, TY. Ooh, he did spot it there, but I don't think he actually showed it to Parting right there that he knows. Yeah, no, there's no way. 
Uh, so, yeah, he does spot right now that there is a full-on proxy coming up. I don't think that party noticed that, but maybe he did. Oh, well. Is he gonna... Okay, I was gonna say, is he gonna shoot at that from the high ground? Not entirely sure. Anyways, uh, he's gonna be able to defend this relatively easily right now. There's a Raven coming up, so that's gonna be his form of detection as the Dark Shrine is being proxied. This is a little bit, um, a little bit greedy though from parting. I mean, building those structures outside on the map, I mean, hoping your opponent isn't gonna spot it, always a little bit of a gamble. This should be Emphasis on should be um, a clean hold right now from the Terran player, right? I mean, he's gonna have everything that he needs. Raven is gonna be timed absolutely perfectly. Dark Shrine is finishing as the Raven is as well. So this means that TY is gonna have all of the tools at his disposal to defend this just fine, right? Now, obviously, the Raven can still be shot out of the sky, but Dark Templar, sadly for them, cannot lay on their backs and then, like, I don't know, use their samurai swords to, to knock the Raven out of the sky. They can't throw their blade, is what I'm trying to say. But it should be A-OK -okay right now for the Terran player. So here come the Dark Templar. One of them wants to go to the main, the other one wants to go to the natural. And the Raven is seen right away. And, uh, oh, nicely done. I like that. He does get the kill right there on one of those Templar. Alrighty, now maybe this is gonna be a moment where the Protoss player is gonna be able to now send that Dark Templar into the main. Sometimes the Terrans feel a little bit adventurous right now and send their Raven across the map instead. Is he gonna be able to get any SCV kills? I think it's just, it's important to get at least a couple to justify the cost, you know? Three SCVs is actually much better already than nothing. Oh, gets four. There you go. In the meantime, Third Nexus will be acquired as well on the side of the Protoss player. He is gonna go for his beloved Blink upgrade as well. There's a Robo Bay coming up and then also a bunch of gateways. So we're setting ourselves up for a nice little macro game. All right. So when is TY gonna venture out onto the map? No third command center yet for him. Once again, Prism inside of the main base being an absolute nuisance. This is nice, man. He's actually getting way more damage done there than I expected. Yeah. Nicely done. So, six workers here in total is nothing to scoff at. That's a pretty decent amount of damage at the cost of one Dark Templar. Colossus and extended thermal lanes now. Oh, dude, look at this. Yeah, you need some units over here. All right. I guess it's because TY has actually sent out the majority of his army right now to watch that watchtower. I was wondering if he was maybe going to clean up these structures, but that's not going to be the case. He's just going to make a beeline straight to watch the third base right now of that Protoss player. Now, Protoss player does have a shield battery over here. Nexus is gonna finish up in a little bit, so... Should be able to battery overcharge that battery here in just a little bit too. Blink is done. First Colossus is just about to come out. The timing here seems to be impeccable for, uh, for parting. Question is, does he have enough? Oh my god. Decent force fields. Uh, not perfect. Yeah. That could actually, uh, he could have obviously prevented any of those marines from slipping in. I think he should be okay though. Yeah. Nicely done. So that's a really, really good situation to be in. Eventually, by the way, the structures on the other side of the map will get cleaned up as well, so no more warp ins from there, but good defense right now here by Parting, and I'm liking this position for him quite a bit. So TY currently does have that um, that supply advantage, right? He does also... Oh, he even gets an extra an extra Marauder kill there. Uh, he also has um, just way more, you know, you know, army. Like, right now it's 52 army versus 36. I believe earlier... Oh, he might lose... Yeah, he's gonna lose the pretty. Um, earlier it was like 20-something army supply for the for the Protoss player versus like 50-something of the Terran, but obviously Terran is not really able to push into that entrenched Protoss position. Especially with three shield batteries, you're really not gonna be able to push in there very easily. So, <clears throat> generally speaking, if you have the eco advantage right now, you can make way more stuff as the game progresses. So, double fort now coming up as well. Additional gateways are being added on. Charge is gonna finish up here too. Still no third base landed over here for the Terran player. So every single minute that goes by right now, this Protoss is getting further and further ahead. His army is also, <clears throat> excuse me, it's early in the morning, guys. Let me, let me drink a little bit of water. Mm. Um, <clears throat> the Protoss player is also getting a far more sophisticated army composition, which I like a lot as well. Splash damage is just, you know, the name of the game in this matchup. Well, I guess the third command center here is gonna finish up eventually. There's really not a whole lot that TY can do right now. 
He started up the counter to the Colossus. So those Vikings are going to be coming out at two at once. So that's nice. They come out in pairs, man. It's kind of like Zerklings. Do you think they hold hands as well? No, probably not. I don't know. What actually happens inside of these starports? Do you think they're uh, they're training a bunch of dudes to like know how to captain these these ships, or do you think they're actually producing the starports, or maybe both? I don't know. The structures don't seem to be that big, but I guess they're not entirely in skill. I mean, if you assume that like a marine is like I don't know, like 180, like six foot. Mm, starport's still gonna be pretty big, actually. Now that I think about it, yeah, no, they're still gonna be pretty big. I made a video at some point uh, called the real skill mod, where someone basically put all of the structures and the units and whatnot in real skill, which was awesome. Those videos actually got like millions of views, which is pretty insane. I think they're actually my most viewed videos on the channel. I do like those quite a bit. But anyways, let's see how this fight is gonna go. So Protoss has had a nice eco here for a while. He has a gutta. Oh my god, he's got a massive army as well. Colossi moving forward right now as well. Good interference matrix right there on one of them. Stalkers, uh, yeah, they get sniped by those Marauders very, very easily. Siege Tank in the back also dealing a bunch of damage. That Colossus right now derping forward. And I think that TY, with that superior army lead, is just going to be able to hold this easy peasy. Not a good fight there at all for parting. Ugh. Yeah, whenever one of your... Uh one of your Colossi gets disabled, right? And that's really like your main damage dealing ability. Uh, it's it's not ideal. You want to, you know, use those stalkers to snipe the Vikings out of the sky. But uh, yeah, if, <laughs> if your Colossi aren't firing because of the interference matrix, that was, by the way, a Raven ability in case you, uh, in case you missed it. But um, uh, yeah, it's, it's very difficult to really get any damage in. So I don't really like that push there all too much for parting. He probably is reconsidering that move right now as well. Fourth Nexus, though, was acquired during all of it. You think this, this Terran player is now going to move across the map? He does, by the way, have a couple of ghosts now added into the mix, too, which is fantastic. Already in anticipation right now for the Templar Archive switch. So High Templar will be coming up here in just a little bit, but with good, uh, with good EMPs, he can potentially, you know, just reduce their, uh, <clears throat> their energy to zero, which is going to make pushing significantly easier. Protoss in the meantime, sending in a pretty big hit squad right now towards the third base here of the Terran player. Mm, and this is now turning into a bit of a base race. A lot of damage is being done here by Parting in the meantime on the side of the Terran, but I mean, I don't really know if I like this position for him all too much. It looks to me like the Terran just has way more units, and obviously Terran can sit at the top of their ramp quite comfortably as well. Love the addition right now of the Liberators too. Is he going to be able to blink around them? He will be able to pick those up eventually, but the cost efficiency here of that small Terran army is going to be absolutely fantastic. And in the meantime, I mean, if you look at the supply counts right now, there's a massive advantage here for TY. There is Storm available. He does land some EMPs there eventually, though. So that's nicely done. Not a whole lot of kills there by that army. There's actually still one High Templar waiting for it to get enough energy. Also, a High Templar actually coming in from the high ground. A lot of probes will get picked off, and I think that eventually these zealots will be shut down inside of the main base. And that means right now it will come down primarily to the amount of damage that TY can do. Now, he's been taking a lot of storms to the face, unnecessarily so. The Metavex, though, while they're mostly out of energy now, they have been keeping this Terran army alive quite well. I think, yeah, this is, I think, still going to be a little bit too much right now for the Terran player. And even though Parting did try his best there, defending pretty much everything, he lifted up the third CC, which is a nice feature of those Terran units. Apparently, he's even going to be uh, bringing this army back home. He did also find out about this newly acquired expansion here from Parting over at the fourth base. So I think all he needs to do right now is just, you know, get a bit of, uh, a bit of an army together again and just push across. Should be okay. This is now effectively like, well, I guess one and a half base here for the Protoss player. One cheeky little widow mine. Just walked into the main base, even retargets that one. Get seven kills in one hit. Love it. Yeah, I mean, with Mule's landing right now, there it is. <laughs> that Terran economy is gonna be through the roof. Look at that. And since he didn't really um, get his, his production affected here at all, this is just gonna be GG cold right now by parting. He knows very well that TY is just gonna muster up a big force once again and then push towards his base. All right, so here we go. That brings us to game number three, which will be on Golden War, and that's going to be the final one for this best of three series. Now, already, 
<laughs> An SCV seems to be stand out across the map once again. This could be once more that Maca Rex that we saw in game number one. Do we call them? I guess we don't call them Maca Rexes anymore, Loco. You're such a boomer. This is this is yeah, just a barracks that you plant on on well somewhere. It doesn't really matter. Now it is gonna be two SCVs send across though. So this will be a cheeky aggressive opener here from TY, and I actually really, really like that. He doesn't need to do this, by the way. He's one of the strongest macro Terrans in the world. But I think if you want to be, you know, a top tier pro gamer, being able to cheese is one of your biggest strengths, right? I always say it like the strongest cheesy players in the world are the ones that actually can macro, right? So he doesn't actually necessarily need to like obtain a massive, massive lead with this and do game-ending amounts of damage. He could also just obtain a small advantage and then macro his way out of there, right? Now, Parting is gonna go across the map with this probe, so that's really, really important. He's gonna be able to figure out roughly what it is that this Terran player is going for. This time around, he will notice the lack of any gases there inside of the main base. So it's not gonna be the same thing that we saw earlier. And he should know right now what it is that he's going up against. Sees the lack of refinery inside of the main base. Well, one is going up right now, but this is already a little bit later than you would normally expect it. Parting should be able to defend this, assuming he handles this well. Cybercore coming up, Zealot coming up as well. He did not plant down the Nexus, and that's really the big deal, right? Planting down the Nexus is the big problem. If you do that, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, once the Cybercore finishes, this is going to be significantly easier. A couple of the probes are pulled away as well. Cybercore will unlock, obviously, the production of Adepts, but then also Stalkers and Shield Batteries. And Shield Batteries, obviously, absolutely fantastic when it comes to base defense. Chrono Boost being utilized right now as well, and I think this should be okay. Now, a lot of lost mining time here already, though. Ooh, okay. The boys are pulled as well. Most of the SCVs now from the main base here of the Terran player are being sent across. Shield Battery is coming up. He's gonna be starting up a Stalker here as well. Here are the SCVs. That, yeah, that battery is not gonna be done in time. Okay, gets an SCV kill there. That's good. Second shield battery now also coming up. Uh, is this gonna be able to deal enough damage? I think he needs to pull more of the probes. Yeah, the probes are coming up here eventually. Stalker will be coming up as well. I love the fact that he actually decided to plant down that second pylon over here. Obviously, while this is going on, mules are still mining as well, right? So nice little bit of mineral walking there as well. Trying to get the wraparound right here with all of those probes. Ooh, the SCVs though and the marines have managed to get into that little bit of, of a mineral patch blocker over there, which is absolutely fantastic. But this should be a hold right here for parting in the end. Shield batteries are done right now. More marines are coming up, but... Yeah, just get him back to mining, dude. I think you just get him back to mining at this point. All right, good defense. So, big picture here. 12 SCVs going down versus 9 probes. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind is that while this is all happening, right, those mules are bringing in resources. So, this always feels a little bit rough when you're a Protoss player and you look at the replay. You're like, okay, I defended that really well, right? I got, like, twice the amount of workers that my opponent has. And then you look at the income graph and you're like, okay, this is... You know, not as big of an advantage as I thought, just because of these yellow mining machines. They're gonna add on a lot of additional production very, very quickly. But it was a hold, and that's the most important part. Now, where do you take this from here if you're parting? He could go ahead and just still expend on the low ground. He could also decide to try and capitalize on this situation, knowing very well that these barracks are gonna have to fly across the map once again, right? Terran's not gonna be able to produce for a little bit. Um, yeah, he could definitely capitalize on that as well, just by going for, like, for example, a four gate. Like I mentioned earlier, while the warp gate upgrade obviously hasn't been increased, I mean the research time that is, he's still going to be able to finish it up plenty in time here in just a little bit. Now one other big thing though, I guess one other big change compared to like early days StarCraft 2 is that the maps are much bigger. So yeah, you need to get yourself like a pylon and a warp gate out there. Actually, like pylons also used to give you full warp in speed, right? So a whole lot of things have changed, so maybe it's not the best follow up. Um, but yeah, like there certainly is options right now for him to go, or there are options right now for him to go for a one base push. He's just happily making probes again though. There's gonna be that robotics facility here as well, and a second gate. Still no expo here for either player. So map design is quite a bit different too, right? So TY having this high ground to, uh, to look at right now is absolutely wonderful too. These Stalkers are going to have a very hard time moving up there. I mean, maybe he can try and snipe some of them. Zealot apparently send in as bait. It's a little sad. But, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean... Yeah, three Stalkers can one-shot Marines. Alright, now. Nah. He's not going to be able to get that much done. He's not going to be able to get that much done. 
Now, the amount of gateways here that are being added on indicate to me that he probably wants to go for a prism. And maybe go for a one base push. Yep, there's the prism. And just get a whole lot of units to your opponent's side of the map. This is obviously a little bit aggressive though, right? Terran is going to be able to start producing an army right now once again. Pumping out one medevac, one widow mine, and two marines at once. Nothing to scoff at. That's a pretty scary force. If Terran would have gone... Oh, this is nice. If Terran would have gone for an expo, I think that this one base all in from Protoss would be absolutely fantastic. Right now though, since... Oh my god, this could actually become really crazy really fast. Oh, he's going to send the medevac across. Uh, right now, this could definitely become a bit of a base race here in the final map. Two dropships pass each other in the night. <laughs> I like this. So both players actually pretending like they're doing something uh, very cheeky. When both of them are doing it though, it's not so cheeky anymore. Okay, now Parting is going to get the heads up here, which is very helpful. Is he going to warp in at home? That's the real question. He should. Oh my god, he does see the uh, the drop coming in right now, but I think that this warping is just a little bit late. Widowmine is gonna burrow over here too. How many kills is he gonna be able to get? N oh my god. <laughs> that is a lot of damage being done in a very short amount of time. At the same time though, Protoss is breaking into the main base. A siege tank is finishing up here in just a little bit for TY, which I don't necessarily like too much. I think a cyclone probably would have been more useful. The drop over there though, ugh. It is still, it's still dealing a lot of damage. Well, actually, now that I think about it a little bit more, the Siege Tank... Since there's no more probes, right? Like, there's there's two workers for the Protoss player. All the Siege Tank needs to do is just buy time. That's, you know, it's very good at that. A couple Marines here ready as well to gun down that Prism. Good wraparound there as well. And I think the DPS is just barely going to be enough. Good micro so far on these Stalkers. 10 SCVs end up falling here as well. Prism though, dangerously low. There is a Viking out right now, and that's game. That's gotta be game. Yep, there it is. Whew. Oh, wow. I think that was uh, TY's announcer pack that he was playing with, shouting JJ very, very aggressively. Anyways, awesome series right there. I hope you enjoyed watching it. It is indeed gonna be TY who ends up winning. For now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to smile. Don't forget to subscribe in case you want to see more. But I hope to see you once again in the next one.